Welcome intro. Um, so we're going to go through a awesome review here um, for your final exam. I'm going to do this in two parts. So today will be equations, um, exponents, scientific notation, and I think I got a couple of radicals on here. Tomorrow's review will be more of an all-around review, but I'll have some transformations in there, and I'll also throw in there Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so this is units one, three, and a little bit of four, and then tomorrow we'll do two and five, and then just kind of a little bit of everything. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do, um, I'm probably going to work out all the odds. You'll have an opportunity to work out the evens, and then I'll show you the answers before I move on to the next slide. Okay? Um, let's see, I think that's kind of far away. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. I don't know what the sound effect was for. Mm, this is good. No, you can't see that one on the bottom, can you? Well, that's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. Number one, solve each equation. So I'm trying to solve for x here. Uh, so if you want to use the uh, line going down the middle here, that's fine. I can't do anything on this side, so I'm just going to leave it. Right? This 7x is going to be brought down. The 3 needs to distribute to both things on the inside. Uh, so this is going to be a plus 15x. This will be minus 9. Okay. Now I know I have to combine like terms before I go any further. So this is negative 119 equals 22x minus 9. Only thing I can do now is I've got to add 9 to both sides. Okay. Gone. I'm left with uh, negative 110 is going to equal 22x. Divide by 22 on both sides. And my answer is going to be uh, negative 5. So x equals negative 5. Okay. Go ahead and try out number 2 um, while I work out this one here. Um, this one, so we're going to jump to scientific notation. Uh, it appears to be something that I don't know the answer for, so I'm going to make it up. Uh, let's go ahead and just rewrite it over here. This is 2.17 times 10 to the negative third power. Remember, a negative exponent never means a negative number. It just means it's a really small number, like a decimal. Um, and then it's being multiplied by all I can see is 3.33. Uh, and it's times 10. I think that's to the third power. Let me just check. Actually, to the... F it is to the third power. Okay, good. I'm back. Don't worry. I'm back here. Okay. So, when I'm multiplying these two things together, I first want to multiply the two inner terms together, or the two actual number values together, and then I will get another value. So, go ahead and multiply that. 2.17 times 3.33. And I get 7.2261. Okay. Now, the rule is when I multiply with exponents, um, and they have the same base, and that's 10 on both of them, I am actually adding these things. So it's negative 3 plus 3. Well, that's 0. So this is 7.2261 times 10 to the 0 power. Or this is simply just going to be 7.2261. Okay. Because anything to the 0 power is 1. Okay. So this would be 10 to the 0 power, which is 1. So it's really 7.2261 times 1. Okay. Go ahead and pause me. Uh, try to do the other two problems, and I will reveal the answers. So don't not pause me. Definitely do pause me. Okay. It's weird. All right. Hopefully you pause me and you're back. You tried and you got them right. Um, my answers are negative 8 for this equation. Okay. Uh, N equals negative 8. And for here, hopefully you saw that. And you actually can't see this. Okay. The answer for this one is 2.696 times 10 to the 6th power. Now let me do a little bit of explaining here. Remember that the first terms, that first number value needs to be between 1 and 10. But if I multiply 6.74 times 4, I'm going to get something way bigger than 10. I'm going to get like 24 plus something, you know what I mean? That's right, 26. So I'm going to get 26.96. That number's too big. So I need to move the decimal one more time to the left. That movement of one more time to the left adds one more to the exponent. So for instance, just looking at this offhand, you see a 1 here and a 4. Well, the rule is I'm adding those, right? So 1 plus 4 is 5. But because I had to move the decimal again to account for a smaller number, I'm actually increasing the exponent by 1. Okay? So you would, when you just multiply this out, you had 26.96 times 10 to the fifth. But 26.96 is not proper scientific notation. I've got to move the decimal place again, and every time I do that, I've got to move the exponent up one. Okay, good. Hopefully you got that. Uh, good. Let's move on to the next set of problems. 
hopefully you're with me. Hopefully you feel good about this. If you did the packet, um, you should be really, really good on your final. Next set of problems. Okay. Exponents. And there's four of them, so you can have an opportunity to work on those. The first one, and this is just like scientific notation, just like the thing we did here. I multiply the outer numbers together, or the actual number values together. This is just going to be two. Uh, because one times two. P, I'm adding the exponents. This is P to the sixth done. Another way to look at this is break everything apart into its parts that you know. This is P to the fourth times two times P to the second. Well, this is really a times one in front two. And then put them back together with multiplying the things that are alike. Okay? And then you just kind of push this whole thing together and you get this. Okay? Go ahead and try that one because you can see it. I'll work on this one. Multiply the outer numbers together. Uh, and I get 8, and then I have r to the third times r to the first. I'm adding those exponents. It's r to the fourth. Okay, done there. Let me go ahead and give you the answers for this. Hey, I'm still being filmed. They're going to be like, what's going on? Uh, I think I have one more slide you want to go. <coughs> um, 4m to the second, because again, m to the zero power is just 1, and then r to the zero power is just one, but that still remains a two here. So it's really two times two r, and I don't know if you can see that, but that's four r. Four r. Okay. Let me go to the next set real quick. Um, okay. Uh, let's just do the top two, the bottom two. You don't have to worry about so much. So here. The parentheses mean something significant. It means that whatever exponent it is, it has to distribute to everything on the inside. So for instance, this zero, this is an easy one though. This zero essentially is distributing to the three and it's distributing to the x to the negative third. See, there are two things here, okay? Well, anything to the zero power is just one. And because we have a zero on the outside, the answer is just simply one, okay? That was simple. Here, the negative one distributes to the four and it distributes to the n squared. So this is really 4 to the negative first power times, and then I actually multiplying these things, this is n to the negative second power. Okay? So go ahead and see if you can take that next step there for me, and I'll give you the answers. Okay. So here we've got 1 over 4n to the second. Remember what that negative exponent means. It means I put a 1 in the numerator and put whatever this thing was in the denominator. So this is going to be 1 over 4 to the first, or just 1 over 4. And this is 1 over n to the second power. So when I multiply these two things together, the 1's multiply together, and 4 times n squared multiplies together, so this is 4n squared. My answer is 1 over 4n squared. Uh, I believe there is one more set that we can do. Yes, and the answers are still showing. It stinks. Okay. When you see a big number under the radical, and it says to simplify, Put in your calculator and see what you get. Because it might be a perfect square, and because they're so large, you don't know. Um, or your calculator will also give you that, um, that simplified radical form if you're on math print. Make sure you know how to solve these things, though. If I give you a big number, for instance, the ones we've done in class for our unit 4 test, I just want you to simply put it in the calculator and see what happens. Because it may be pleasantly surprising, like exactly here are my answers. These are perfect squares. Okay? So my answer would have been one of these two things. Okay? Just about a nine minute video or so. We're gonna do the second part of this tomorrow. Um, please, please, please make sure you're working on your packets. Um, the packet is your key to getting a good grade on this, okay? Bye-bye.